I actually think I'm the strongest man who ever lived. The strongest man who ever lived? Yes, I'll make that statement. Magic Mountain, just north of Los Angeles in California, is the sort of place that deals in superlatives. It's a sort of Disneyland without Mickey Mouse, a giant fairground that claims to have the biggest, the highest, the longest, the fastest, and certainly the most furious ways of flying through the air with the greatest of unease. In this neck of the woods, it's an act of faith to believe that all things are possible. You can now join us at Magic Mountain as we meet the world's strongest men attempting to achieve their own impossible dreams. Let's now meet the contestants. Yeah. Hi, I'm Bill Dunn, and uh, I'm from Charlottesville, Virginia. I weigh in at 360 pounds. Hi, my name is John Gamble. I weigh 290 pounds. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Kurt Marsh uh, from the Oakland Raiders. Uh, I weigh 285 pounds. I'm 6'6". Six, six. Hi, my name's Jim Hoff. I'm 6'2", 270 pounds. I grew up in La Mirada, California, and I now live in Jordan, Minnesota. I'm Dave Waddington. I'm from Sandusky, Ohio, and I weighed in at 280 pounds. Hi, I'm Ross Browner. I play the Cincinnati Bengals. I weigh 250 pounds, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. That is pain. That is terrible pain. Hi, my name's Jeff Capes. I weigh 320 pounds, and I live in Peterborough in England. I'm Tom McGee. I'm from Canada, British Columbia, in the city of Vancouver. I'm weighing about 285. And what else would you like to know? <laughs> Hi, my name is Ernie Hackett. I'm from Waltham, Massachusetts, and I weigh 300 pounds. I'm Bill Kazmaier from Auburn, Alabama. I weigh 335 pounds, and I am the defending world's strongest man. Those 10 men pit their strength against the law of gravity and human limitation to become the world's strongest man. And the first of the 10 competitive events, the truck pool. A race against the clock to haul a 10-wheeled, 400-horsepower, 8-ton truck along a 100-foot track. In this heat, two power teams. Dave Waddington there in the blue lane and John Gamble in the yellow. Once the inertia of the truck is overcome, it's a brutally simple matter of keeping the pressure on, keeping the centre of gravity low and blocking out the persuasion that the track is stretching off into infinity. Waddington staggering just a little bit there. Once this truck stops, no human muscle power is going to get it moving again. And poor John Gamble there, feeling the agony. And a good time for Waddington. He's over in 53.25 seconds. Uh, I'll sleep well tonight, but I will be drunk. The awesome presence of Big Bill Dunn the heaviest and oldest man in the competition, his opponent, six foot six inch American football star, 
Kurt Marsh. So far, the blue lane has been the lucky one, and it can be no comfort to Marsh. But so far, nobody who started in that yellow lane has completed the first. Dunn, great determination from him, feeling I'm sure every one of us for the years, putting those 360 pounds of body weight and massive strength to good effect. Staggering a bit, as the blood drains away from the upper body, and every step takes both of them farther through the barricades of pain. Legs turn to life. Probably Dunn can't see this, that uh, Marsh is really staggering now, beaten and hardly cold. From now on, for Dunn, the target through his blowing vision is that oh so far away from him. And he finishes in the time just behind Waddington's, and another failure in the yellow lane. Well, I'd say is uh, that's the hardest thing I've ever, ever done. That thing's a damn man. Jeff, you've uh, got the bad luck of drawing the yellow lane. No one has finished in that lane yet. That's true, but uh, that's the luck of the draw, and um, it's one of the unfortunate things of seeing all the other competitors stopping, and uh, unfortunately in the same place. So uh, it makes you wonder whether there is a discrepancy in the surface. My NBC colleague Bob Trumpy talking there to Jeff Capes about what could be more than just a jinx on that yellow lane. Uh, you see Jeff trying to exercise it with a charm and probably, too, trying to blot out the thought that he's taking on the mighty Bill Kazma. <laughs> often this looks like a real race. Very little in it at the start. Both men keeping very low, trying to build up that speed. Kazma is just beginning to get away, building up that momentum. Really piling on. Now, Capes is getting past that sticking point. Remember, nobody is finished in this yellow lane, but he looks as if he's going to overcome whatever it is that's wrong with his lane. He's battling against what now seems certain to be strange disadvantage. Kazmaier, though, looks as if he's got it all the way. He really is charging down that line, heading on all fours, and it's going to be a remarkable time. Just over 37 seconds, really quite astonishing time. But now for Jeff Capes, it's a test of character and determination, slonging it out to complete the course, looking anxiously for the time. And he's second. Check it, check it. Jeff, you're the only man to finish in the left lane time of 46 seconds. Yeah. I'm happy with that. You've, uh, you've made a point. Well... With respect to all the other guys, they've got the option going again. Well, the decision was made to... I can go on the blue lane again if I want, but I don't think we're going to beat 46 seconds. I'm happy to, to pull it when nobody else has pulled it. Well, Jeff's satisfaction didn't last long. With the judges deciding to give the contenders from that suspect yellow lane the option of another go in the blue, Kurt Marsh took the chance and gets a time of 44.9, two seconds faster than Capes' time. Now here's Jeff showing what he's made of, responding to that challenge from Marsh, and he looks really determined to win back that second place, and even perhaps try to overtake Kazmaier's time in this second goal in the blue lane. And it's a storming start, he really is building up his speed, keeping very low, keeping on all fours all the way. This really is a fantastic performance, and you can't help but speculate what might have happened in his head-to-head -head with Kazmaier if the luck of the draw had been different. And here's Jeff now storming away, and he might just beat, no, he doesn't. A wonderful, he looks over to the time, just on 38 seconds. And a tremendous achievement there for Jeff, really showing his character, and happy day as he makes a point. He edges Kurt Marsh into third place and uh, keeps himself right up by the brawny shoulder of Bill Kazmar, with the three powerlifters, Waddington, Dunn and Hackett, making their presence felt too. Magic Mountain gives a whole new meaning to swings and roundabouts as we move to the second event, the log lift, where the techniques of the specialist lifters should come into their own as they tackle increasingly heavy tree trunks. Ross Browner, American football star, is fast and strong, but he had to find himself in 10th place with this best lift of 224 pounds. 
Kurt Marsh achieved 260 pounds, good enough to put him in eighth. Strength coach Lou Dunn showed good technique set to tie with Marsh in eighth place with his 260 pound lift. Good lift for Bill Dunn. Jim Huff, having achieved a creditable 285 pounds, tried to hurl a lot at 320 pounds. But he settled for seven. Dave Waddington offered up a prayer, which seemed to be answered as he tackled the 320 pound law. Massively muscled John Gamble made lifting 320 pounds of forestry look like child's play. Now here's Jeff Capes. Now Jeff isn't too fond of this event. Last year he failed at 312 pounds. Here he is going for a personal best of 320, which would be a remarkable improvement. And here he goes. He's got to get, he's got to lock these arms out. Not even encouragement, all the determination in the world. And he's made it. Personal best. And he hates that tree. Tom McGee is Canada's strongest man. A former gymnast, he's worked really hard on technique. And here he is attempting to stay with Waddington Gamble and Capes. And carry the challenge to... Hackett and Kazma, and he makes it. 320 pounds. Good luck. Jeff, congratulations. You really climbed the mountain now. That's my PB. I, I looked at last year, so I think I just come out at 312. But uh, it's very important this year to do well early on um, because they dropped one of your good events, and uh, I was happy to get in there and do 320. Now things are getting serious as the 345 pound log arrives on the scene. Uh, Jeff Capes at six foot five and a half, really lacking the technique of the specialists, and for him, this is unknown territory. But he's going to give it a good old British try, and here he goes. And 345 pounds just proves too much for Jeff Capes. Tom McGee looking very calm and methodical as he prepares to tackle that 345 pound log. John Gamble there watching closely. He failed at his weight, as did Dave Waddington. So let's now watch the Canadian side. Well, did he lock up? No, that he. That left elbow just wouldn't straighten up. Didn't quite make it. So now it's left to the power man. Here comes Hackett, first of all, Ernie Hackett, to fight out for the top place. And there goes Ernie Hackett, come back to the powerhouse. Up it goes. And that's what Ernie thought about it all. We'll enjoy that. He really did suck yourself up for that, didn't he? Well, I put it all together for just that one big effort because there's just no way I could make it the second time. Just couldn't be done. And so just once, that's all you have. It needs to get the second place, you know? Now, do you reckon you can top that weight? Well, we'll have to see how Bill does first. And let's just see how Bill does do. Bill Kazmaier, 345 pounds. So, with three men tied in first place, it's on to the next wave. Ernie Hackett fails to clear the 355 pounds. So, it's up to Bill Casman. This case, 10 points away. Are 
down, Kazman seemed able to call him that extra, that extra belief in himself. The hallmark of a great shot. And a little touch of truly permissible angles. And it You really do sort of uh, glory in it when you, when you win. I saw you doing that big thumbs up sign. Is that for the other athletes? No, it's actually just uh, a victory cheer, one good second of glory, and then it's all over. Do you rate yourself as the world's strongest man right now? Uh, yeah, I actually think I'm the strongest man who ever lived. The strongest man who ever lived? Yes, I'll make that statement. So, after two events, a supremely confident Kazmaier with complete full house, 20 marks from the two events. With Jeff Capes putting up a strong challenge, 15.5, just behind them, Hackett and Warrington. The third and final event of the first day here at the World's Strongest Men competition is the first event borrowed from the Highland Games heavy events, and that is tossing the 56-pound weight over the bar. Now, this came about as a variation of tossing the sheaf over the bar when somebody had the idea, well, why not try a weight? Where do you find a 56-pound weight lying handily about? Well, what you do is you go along to the local miller, and he's bound to have a half hundred weight weight, and it's looking something like this with a ring pull on it, and somebody had the bright idea of standing with a back to the bar, swinging this weight, and then tossing it with contemptuous ease over the bar. The world record holder for this is Jeff Capes. He tossed it 17 feet 2 inches last year, but uh, Bill Kazmaier, who's already been at the Bremar Games, where he had 16 feet 2 inches, a little bird tells me that he, the man who's already called himself the strongest man who's ever lived, is going to toss this thing today 18 feet. That's three times my height, 56 pounds. Well, we'll see. Bill Dunn, weighing 360 pounds. Let's hear it for Bill Dunn. In the early stages of the contest, Big Bill Dunn, like most of the athletes, had never tried anything quite like this before. It's all about rhythm and coordination and suppleness, as well as brute strength. The bars are 13 feet. Head cross, Bill Dunn. Kirk Marsh had one great advantage. The uh, tallest man in the competition at six foot six, he's already halfway to that 13 foot bar. Good start. Yeah, yeah. But that was the best he could manage. The, next... the likeable and fiercely competitive Dave Waddington looked set for greater heights, but had to settle for this as his best throw. Yeah. 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 The next contestant. John Gamble had successfully cleared the 13-foot mark and uh, now attempted to get ahead with this effort at 14-foot-6. Fails and has to settle for an equal fifth place. Jeff Capes, Tom McGee and Bill Kazmaier are leading the field. Ernie Hackett needs this, 15-feet-6, to stay with them. And he gave it everything there, but it wasn't just good enough. So now it's time to watch the, the shootout for the final here. Round the Highland Games circuits in Scotland, this man, Jeff Capes, has wound up a formidable reputation for himself in the traditional events. As a world record holder at this event, and he really has mastered the tape. And that's the way to do it. Bill Kazmaier, too, has completed in the Highland Games in places like Braemar, and he knows what it takes. Purists would note that perhaps the rhythm isn't quite as smooth, but the result is just as impressive. Now says McGee has gone out, and as so often, it's a battle between Capes and Kazmaier. And here goes Jeff. Watch out for that smooth pendulum swing. To 
Three big swings. Here it goes. And he's cleared it. No. Oh, tragedy for Jeff. Cleared the bar and then hit it on the way down. Very disappointing for him there. So Kazmaier, not having to go to the magic 18 feet to prove his point, simply is to clear this to win the contest. And that is a fantastic fight. Fantastic. Three events and three first places for the big man from Alabama. And as you watch this power wind up, you judge by how much this weight clears the 17-foot bar. Well, Kazmaier, congratulations. You know, when it comes down to that kind of shootout, what goes on in your mind? Because it seems to me it's much more than just muscle power at that stage. It's going to be brain power as well. Yeah, it seems to come down to Jeff and myself a whole lot. And when I look him in the eye, I really can get up. Do you get hate in your eye as well? Oh, not at all. I just want to win. What about that, Jeff? You know, is there any hate in this business? Because when it comes down to two guys slugging it out like that, you've got to channel your hate against somebody, don't you? Sure. I think uh, the first two events, you know, a couple of years ago, um, I heard about uh, Bill Kazmaier, and, and he's a legend in his own right, you know, in the strength scene. And... Uh, We've uh, competed now for three years and on the Highland Games circuit as well. And it, as he said, it was always down to me and Kaz. We're good pals out, out of the, uh, the game, and uh, I think that's uh, as it should be. Do you think I'm in danger standing between you now? Oh, I think so. Well, moving swiftly away from that danger zone, let's look at the scoreboard. And after three events, Kazmaier has the maximum 30 points. With Jeff Capes keeping up the challenge, Hackett and McGee looking dangerous. But with the footballers, Huff and Browner, still to make any kind of impact on this competition. <laughs> Event number four, the barbell. That's five-eighths of an inch thick cold steel. In the first group, five men, Ernie Hackett, Jim Huff, John Gamble, Tom McGee and Ross Brown. <laughs> In the second group, on the same bar, Kazmaier, Waddington, Dunn, Capes and Marsh. And a fantastic variety of headgear being tried out. Kazmaier's trying a touch of the Eastern Promise with what looks like a rather elaborate turban on his head. But it is a towel. Jeff Capes adopts the rolled-up towel, but much more importantly, he's got the speed to make this steel bar look like a piece of liquid. Kazmaier trying readjustments, all about uh, capes, the sweat and grunty and groaning is going on. Jeff is strolling around with that bar, casually draped around his neck like a bootlace tie, and Kazmaier is really struggling. And here's Bill Dunn discovering just what a pain in the neck was really all about. How are you getting it done? How are you getting it done? You've got the technique left, just relax. You've got the technique. Come on, Bill. And just look at Kazma, a brand new technique here, hands across the ocean for him as he tries to ease in that last inch and a half to make the bar fit into the gauge. And he looks as if he's done. So, John Gamble and Jim Huff join Capes and Kazmaier to decide the top four placings. The bar for the final is now 11 sixteenths of an inch thick and 4 foot 6 inches in length. So let's watch Coates as he makes his attempt in the bar and look at that. Great speed, no bother at all. And he's done. Now if Kazmaier has got any sort of peripheral vision, he must be able to see a sense Coates stalking about at the back there with a job done, which must be a signal for the big man and for Jim Huff. We really are struggling here. Now, this could upset the whole balance of this contest. It looks as if the British champion could make a real impact here. Huff is struggling very badly. Kazmaier looks as if he might have done that. John Gamble making little impression. One man race, and the winner, Jeff Pitts. Kazmaier manages only seven points with Jim Huff and John Gamble ahead of him. So if there were bonus points for ease of victory, Jeff Capes would be 20 points instead of the valuable 10 that he does score.
Flushed with that success, Jeff Capes should have made mincemeat of the opposition in an event in which he's a master, tossing the cable. But he got it all wrong. And this is what he thought of his effort. Waddington is leading. And it's here for Dave Waddington, present leader. Let's help him out. So it was left to Dave Waddington to maintain the honor of the clans. And what he lacks in finesse, he more than makes up for it in enthusiasm. Now, Highland Games purists may not rate either the rather puny caber or the Waddington style. How about that? That's right. the he exceeded his previous throw with a new record for this event, 40 feet. Three inches. So, with Waddington taking the 10 points, the scene behind Kazmaier on the main scoreboard is looking distinctly more crowded. Capes, despite that disappointing showing, is still runner up, but McGee and Gamble are pressing him very hard indeed. Event number six is the real man killer of the all. Object of the exercise to load 12 167 pound beer kegs onto a flatbed truck. Bill Dunn, no, it's not Beaujest, he failed to complete the course. But this is an event in which Jeff Capes has an excellent track record. He'll attack from the very first keg to the last, and John Gamble is looking a little bit pensive. And there they go, and Gamble is really quite slow. Oh, and he's off to a disastrous start, dropping the barrel, redoubling the effort to pick it up from the deck level again. And Jeff Capes is going to their old league. Very quickly, he needs speed for this. Here, his height is an advantage when it comes to tipping kegs onto the flatbed truck. Gamble, shorter man, and it's much more of an effort there. Tremendous encouragement for these men. Everybody realizes just what an incredible physical effort this demands. Jeff, with only two battles left, picks up the second last one. Gamble is really suffering. He's beginning to get that walking underwater look to him as he staggers his way back there. And he's having problems. Hot day here in the California sunshine. And here comes Jeff Capes now, coming in with what is a good time, best time so far, over oh, the effort of it all. Saw him pound his fist there, never happy. And here comes John Gamble, really struggling to complete the course. But he's a fighter, he'll go all the way, give a tremendous amount of encouragement and returns. Oh, so agonizingly slowly. Is he going to make it? And he does. But this is the kind of event that pushes even the strongest of men to the outermost limits of their endurance. Close. Some beautiful woman over here want to give him mouth to mouth? Please, no. <laughs> I couldn't take it. Capes totally exhausted from the satisfaction of being the fastest so far. That expression says it all. Jim Huff has never known such punishment as this, even in the thud and blunder of American football. Although Ben Hackett is well ahead, he's really starting to hurt. It's a question of who's got the timing better. He has to pace himself more steadily. And he really is the game itself. Here he goes. Slow and steady he may be, but it looks as if he's coming in to win. Huff looks over at him. Oh, and he's dropped it. Disasterful. A disaster for Hackett. And Huff sees the opportunity, rushes in. And what is that? A dead heat? I have a feeling that it might be a dead heat between you and Ernie Hackett. Well, I'd like to run it again. I thought I'd, you know, I'd lost. I didn't, when I saw that Ernie had dropped the barrel. Uh, no jerky responses from Ernie. It's a fine that being the judge. 
second there, beyond him. Now if anyone can catch up with Cates, it should be Kazmaier or his opponent here. The big, fast and superbly conditioned American footballer, Kurt Meyer. And Kurt seems to be absolutely oblivious to the pain of this event, unlike the mighty Kazmaier who looks distinctly distressed. But he looks as if he's out for a Sunday afternoon stroll. Oh, and he's dropped the last barrel. Kazmaier feeling the pain. And let's watch this final finishing in one minute, 17 seconds, to take five seconds off the time. I'm asked by Capes. And look at this. Mission of Bill Kazmaier. Kurt Meyer, a fantastic time there, one minute 17. You're hardly broken sweat. You're not even breathing heavily. How? Huh? What sort of stuff are you made of? Well, uh, that's the way all us Oakland Raiders are, right? No. It's, uh, it's just a different type of thing for a, uh, an athlete like myself. I stay in good condition and work on strength and conditioning and flexibility instead of just power strength. And I think the con combination of the whole thing really helped me. Well, I suppose to be asking too much to expect anyone to come near to breaking that time with Kurt Marsh. But just look at Tom McGee on the left here. He is sprinting. Come on, David! 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 Come on, Time set up by Kurt Marsh of 1 minute 17 looked an absolutely unattainable one, but it looks as if this big fella has got that in his sights. He's going to try and break 1 minute 17. Waddington setting for a much more steady pace. Oh, the disaster striking McGee as he drops the barrel and wastes precious seconds. And here he comes. Can he make it? Picking up that last enormously heavy barrel, 167 pounds. But he's going to make it if he gets it down. One minute, 13 seconds. Quite incredible. He's beaten it by four seconds. He takes the lead. And Dave Waddington is going to be just a little bit behind, a little bit slower than Jeffrey Cooks. Fantastic competition. The winner, the phenomenal Canadian Tom McGee, whose challenge gets stronger and stronger. The Kazmaier lead is looking just a little more vulnerable now. After six events, McGee is pressing strongly to overtake Capes, still grimly hanging on to that second place. Well, after all the frenetic dramas of yesterday and the keg loading, and with the scoreboard in a very interesting situation indeed, today a much more placid setting for the three lifts, all based on power lifting. We have the silver dollar lift, we have the block lift, but we start with that aching example of mind over matter, the battery lift. Well, here's one event you can try at home. All you need is a heavy-duty car battery weighing 60 pounds or so and hold it out at arm's length for as long as you can manage. If you can hold it out at arm's length, you're very strong. If you reckon you can hold it out here, as Bill Dunn is doing, for about 45 seconds, you're either the biggest fibber in town or you should be out here in Magic Mountain. down it comes onto the tape 44.7 seconds and that's going to be a tough time to do this is Tom McGee now, Tom hasn't got the ideal physique for this uh, effort because he's not so massive as Dunn or Gamble and those long arms will take an awful lot of punishment as he tries to lock them out Come on, Tom. Hang it up. Come on, Tom. Hold it in there. Come on, Tom. 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 Come on, fighting against the battery, and it's gone. Right. Now the timekeepers are consulted. 
He looks a bit despondent, and I think we've just heard he's lost it by one and a half seconds. Jeff Capes, it's the meditation approach. Now Jeff knows this is one of his worst events. The long levers that his arms are really not designed for this job. He's fighting it, but it's a losing battle. The battery inexorably goes down, touches there. Oh, it's a poor time, only about 30 seconds. Jeff, disappointment, but surely not surprised. He dreaded this event, put everything into trying to overcome the disadvantage of his long arm physique, but in vain. But here's a man designed for this event. John Gamble has the sort of massive pectoral development and upper arm strength that almost lets him rest his arms on his upper chest. He also has a marvelous Buddha-like calm. Wow, this is going to be an incredible time. He looks completely serene, and down it goes on 56.7 seconds, shattering Don's record. Surely nobody will beat that. Here's one man who's willing to give it a try, Ernie Hanks. Again, it's this stocky physique. Again, the great calm that he approaches, trying to block out his pain, eyes tightly closed. It looks like good time. As it touches the tape, six seconds or so behind Gamble, good enough for second place there for Ernie Hanks. Ernie is perhaps the most deceptive of all the athletes here. Behind that spectacled, mild-mannered appearance is real steel, and he showed it then. And look at these times. Again, the competition really opens out. Kazmar finishing fifth in the battery lift, and those two solid citizens, John Gamble and Ernie Hackett, really making their challenge. Jeff Capes finished last in this event. And as Jeff's hopes plunge, just like the screaming inmates of the giant Colossus switchback, the master scoreboard should now make very interesting reading. And as we can see, Tom McGee now, who's giving Bill Kazmaier a fright. Jeffrey Capes has slipped to third place overall. Marsh, Gamble and Hackett look ever more menacing. The concrete block lift is a variant on the powerlifting squat and it was to prove an even bigger disaster area for the hopes of Jeff Capes. Early in the competition, with the total weight of the blocks at 700 pounds, got ready for his attempt. And this is what happened. Obviously, a severe injury for Jeff Capes, and we can see the pain of it reflecting in his face. Jeff, what happened? Well, as I, as I explained, um, I got my, my arms fairly well up and obviously opened the joint on my shoulder. And uh, when I hit the bottom uh, of the squat, the weight literally sh shook the muscle and tore it off the uh, rotator cuff and damaged the nerves. And um, I've never had any pain like this in my, in my life before. I've never been injured in my life, really. You're pulling out of this contest. Yeah, yeah, I've got to pull out because I, I just can't even feel my arm, you know. And I don't really understand pain because I've never been injured. But now, it, you know, it really hurts. And um... So, a painful exit from the block lift for Jeff Capes. But now, the real battle is on. Ernie Hackett and his fellow powerlifters, Waddington and Kazmaier, and the ever-present Tom McGee, matching one another, lift for lift. Here's Hackett with 955 pounds.
the same token, Dave Warrington. Dave claims to be the man with the strongest legs in the world. Here he goes, trying to prove it. Good setup, come on. They really enjoyed that. Dave Waddington is a sheet metal worker and a fiery competitor. He's been smarting for a year that Kazmar beat him in the squad. This year he told me, I'll take his scalp. Let's go, Bill. Come on, come on. Come on up, Cav. And doesn't Kazmar know that he's got a fight in his hands now? That cage tiger routine is summoning up all his powers to lift his 955 pounds. There's his girlfriend there offering some words of encouragement. Big Kaz snarls his defiance. Control! Come on! Come on! Here he goes. Ah, problems for Big Kaz. He's not going to make it. He's. This is remarkable. The crowd is stunned into silence. Kazmar fails at 955 pounds. Into tension steps the man in the overall second place, Tom McGee. Oh, oh, I gotta have it. Oh, oh, oh. Hey. Come on, Tom. Come on, Tom. Fantastic stuff. It's worked. Where Kazmaier failed, McGee has succeeded. 955 pounds. The youngest competitor in the competition, Tom McGee, surely an example of the power of positive thinking. Now, how can Dave Waddington follow that? Well, never a fellow to blush unseen. Dave is going for a new world record. 1,001 pounds. Get a good setup. Don't go unless you're ready. How Dave hates to lose. One more, come on, get it. Four hundred. It's in. It's in. Quite undaunted, McGee now gets ready to try at a thousand and one, and when he comes to preparation, he really does suffer for his art. Just fails. A massive effort there from Tom McGee. Tom, I know you very well as a gentle, articulate, intelligent young man, and yet here you are turning yourself into a wild man and a monster for doing this event. What do you do to yourself? What I'm trying to do is uh, get the adrenaline flowing in my body through getting excited, and as a result of that, you can lift more. You know, uh, you hear the stories of the woman who the jack breaks and falls on her son and she picks up the car. Well, I'm trying to let that adrenaline out. And as a result, I can lift more, I feel less pain, plus it takes the negative thoughts out of your head. So it's not just total craziness. There is uh, a reason behind it. 
including banging your head against the wall? Whatever it takes, yeah. Well, somehow here in Magic Mountain, all the head banging and the psyching and the hooting and the hollering seem quite appropriate in a fun park where you can get soaking wet pretending to shoot the rapids of the Colorado River. Enjoy the sensation of dropping out of an aircraft without a parachute on the aptly made death slide or experiencing the sort of G-forces that would astound an astronaut all in the cause of having a real good time. But in among all the razzmatazz, the hip hooray and ballyhoo, life is earnest and painful for the competitors in the silver dollar deadlift. Bill Dunn attempted to raise his salary, trying to haul $15,900 off the ground. That's 925 pounds. And there's the power of inflation for you. Dave Waddington lifted 850 pounds to tie for fifth place with Dunn. Tom McGee, gaining in stature with every event, here attempts 925 pounds. Well, Bill Kazmaier must be feeling the hot breath of Tom McGee at the back of his neck as he tries now for a 975 pound lift at 17,000 worth of silver dollars. Jim Huff looks as if he can't believe it. And just look at that. Well, you've got to admire the man injured in the squad. And here he is in the kill of dead weight, 979. Bill Cannon. This is John Gann, trying 975 pounds. But he just can't seem to straighten those knees. He flexes them a couple of times. He's going to try again. But it just will not happen. Tom McGee, a sniff of oxygen, more of that positive thinking. And here he goes, 975, to be up there with Peggy and Pat. And it's failure there for Tom McGee. Bit of disappointment. Ah, it looks philosophical about it. More filthy local pouring in to bring the cash total to $18,500. Weight, $1,055. Ernie Hackett here quietly drawing his concentration around him like a tool. Turning his back on the tumult behind him as Bill Kazmaier gets ready. so convincingly, but he made it. Hackett is still there. Now, to win the event outright, each man will attempt to deadlift 1,085 pounds, a total never before attempted.
Even the strongest man must have a limit, and that looked to be it for Bill Kasnay. Now, can Ernie Hackett deadlift a weight that, in the words of the Master of Ceremonies here, has never been lifted off the surface of the planet Earth with human muscle? 1,085 pounds. Here we go. Well, Ernie's bid for immortality fails, and he has to settle for a share of the first place with Bill Kazmaier. And as we look at the scoreboard there, with the points, nine and a half points each for Hackett and Kazmaier, seven and a half for Gamble and McGee. Ernie explained his motivation. I'll tell you, 90% of the psych I have is to beat Bill Kazmaier. It always has been. Uh, I go back with Bill, and, you know, in a British strongman contest three years ago. And I uh, came in third to him there where he won it. And since then, I've just always wanted to beat him in one thing, you know. I came close today. At least we tied. Could I put one final tactical point to you, Bill? And that is, tomorrow, the sumo wrestling. Uh, in past times, you haven't even had to enter. You've been so far ahead. Could you have taken too much out of yourself on that last couple of lifts? Oh, I don't think so. Uh, my body's in pretty good shape. I'm looking forward to the wrestling. So you're going to go head for head in the sumo? Yeah, I hope nobody loses any teeth. Gentlemen, congratulations again. Many thanks. Thank you. With only one event left, the competition is poised for a grand finale. And with the final event, counting double points, any one of these top five men could win the overall competition, depending on the outcome of the final event. Now, as if the Japanese didn't have enough problems with earthquakes, they came up with this sport, in which the ringside spectators live in ever-present danger of being flattened by 300 pounds of flying flesh. Sumo wrestling and the rules of the game are devastatingly simple. The contestants line up in a wide-legged crouch with their knuckles on this thin blue line, and for the next few moments of explosive action, the whole object of the exercise is to eject your opponent from the dohyo or ring, or to bring him to ground within it. With the results at the top so very close, the outcome of the whole contest could depend on the battle within this ring. So, let battle commence. Battle it is. Kazmaier versus Waddington. If ever there was a grudge match, this is it. Waddington has been dreaming and scheming of how he's going to take Kazmaier apart for 12 months now. Let's see. Kazmaier wins, and Dave Waddington is fit to be tied. <laughs> Sumo wrestling is all about leverage, speed, using a man's strength and weight against himself. Waddington tried but failed to flip over the massive bulk of Kazmaier, and he was furious with himself. <laughs> American footballers traditionally do well at sumo. They're fast on their feet, know all about body contact, and usually have to develop a mean streak to survive. Huff and Browner here are well matched, and Browner at long last looks as if he's found an event to suit him. And wins. And here's an example of courage and character. Jeff Capes, in spite of that painful injury in the block lift, is set to tangle the with Ernie Hackett the in the Super. Fall there for both men, and it looks as if Ernie Hackett has been injured there. But we'll have to wait to find out who's the winner as the judges look at this slow motion replay. The
point of issue is did Ernie's knee hit the deck before Jeff came crashing over him? And there's the confirmation. That means victory for Jeff Tips. And not all the combat was man to man. Here's Bill Dunn wrestling with a parasol and losing by a technical knockout. Now, the first semi final. In the yellow mower sheet, from the University of Virginia, weighing 290 pounds, John Gamble. <laughs> weighing 340 pounds, Bill Kazmaier. Let's hear it for Bill Kazmaier. Bill Kazmaier, if he defeats John Gamble in the semi-final, will know that he's assured himself of the title of the world's strongest man. <laughs> and he's done it, assuring himself of the title of world's strongest man, but now he is still to wait to find out who will challenge him in the sumo final. The one sure thing is that it'll be one of these American footballers. Let's all give a big hand to Ross Browner. In the green policy, 6 feet 5, 290 pounds. From the Raiders, the National Football League, let's hear it for Kurt Marsh. For the uh, right to meet Bill Kazmaier in the championship of the sumo wrestling, offense versus defense. We're going for a thousand bucks. They don't pay offensive linemen nothing. Come on, buddy. You oh, make all the money. man, listen to this. Defensive linemen are the most underpaid people in the league. I mean, offensive linemen got everything. They got the looks. Know. They got okay. They got all the <laughs> money. They get all the touchdowns. They get all the pub. I mean, give us a little break. Uh, brains, brains against brains bronze. Against bronze. Right. Make your own choice. Make your own choice, folks. Good luck, gentlemen. Strongest man and against him, the offensive line man from the Oakland Raiders, Kirk Marsh. And the classic confrontation there, Kazmaier, infinitely the more powerful man, was overcome by the speed and leverage of the much faster man. Kazmaier tried for the bulldozing tactics that succeeded so well against Gamble. But uh, Marsh understands about speed and leverage and balance, and he flips him over so very easily. Well, we're used to high-speed contact, uh, staying down uh, uh, in football. As an offensive lineman, I'm blocking for the backs with the ball. The backs have the ball. I'm keeping the defensive men away, and it's my job to knock people down without getting knocked down myself. And it's very similar in the leverage points and uh, keeping your head up and quick feet and all that kind of thing. That victory gave Marsh sixth place. Jeff Capes was a brave fourth, but the real threat came from Canada's Tom McGee, the top of the heap for the third successive year, the super heavyweight powerlifter from Oberon, Alabama. Bill Kazmaier, many congratulations for the third year in succession declared the world's strongest man. What does that mean to you? Well, it reaffirms my idea that I'm the strongest man who ever lived, and I've already forgotten about it, even though it's only two minutes ago. Looking forward to next year and a comeback defend my fourth year. Former Olympic gold medal hammer thrower Harold Connolly presents the British Beef Trophy to Bill Kazma, who surely made good his claim to be the strongest man in ever lived.